Hi everybody, thanks for being here today. I'm Anastasia Allison and I'm the violinist for the musical Mountaineers and I'm joined by my pianist partner Rose and we're just so thrilled to see all of you here and at the very end of our talk today we are going to be playing a little bit of live music so we're looking forward to sharing that with you and we're looking forward to sharing a little bit about our story of how the musical Mountaineers even came to be. Once upon a time, we were just two women going through the motions of life, living life very much on autopilot and having a feeling that there was something more out there for both of us and not knowing what that was or how to get there. Prior to the musical Mountaineers, I was actually a police officer working for the railroad, oddly enough. And I was very negative about where I was in my life. I looked at people doing these incredible, creative, adventurous things. And I thought that maybe they were a sort of secret group of lucky people who got to do this really wonderful stuff. And that somehow I had missed out on getting the lucky code. I was very much focused on what I didn't want in my life and very much attracting more and more of that into my life. At the time, I was working as a police officer and I went on a snowshoeing trip in January of 2017 and on the way home was involved in a very nearly uh, fatal incident uh, involving my vehicle spinning out across Stevens Pass into the path of an oncoming semi truck. In that single moment, I had no fear. It was a surreal and strange experience, but there was no fear there. And I looked at the rest of my life after that incident and saw that there were all these fears preventing me from actually pursuing the things that I was really excited about. That single incident changed my life and I started taking little steps every single day to improve my life and Rose and I are going to go into those a little bit more deeply. But one of the most critical things that happened to me personally is that I came home one night after working a night shift as a police officer, it was about three in the morning, and I suddenly out of nowhere had a vision pop into my head and it just said, go play your violin on the summit of a mountain. And I'll turn it over to Rose and let you know where she was at that time. Hi everybody, this is Rose. And I'm so excited to share the story of the musical Mountaineers with you today. Prior to meeting Anastasia, I was studying music and I was teaching piano music I had a delight in being in the outdoors and I had a delight in my music. I loved to teach my students and I loved to just share my music with, with lots of people. But I found um, myself in a place where I was not well. I had severe migraines that um, ended me up in the hospital and I was in a place where I was very much reacting to life and not being intentional with um, where I wanted to give my energy. I thought often that joy was something external. It was something that I needed to grasp and reach towards by doing lots of things. And I wasn't aware of um, joy and presence is not some distance distant place or conditional, it can be right here. I can find that presence and that stillness right here and right now. And I was really excited about the idea of playing my music outside because those are two things that I love the most, music and the wilderness. But I didn't know how to make that happen. Go ahead, Anastasia. So I had had this vision of myself playing on the summit of a mountain and I did what any normal person would have done under those circumstances. I posted an ad for myself to Craigslist. I, I posted an ad and 
I said that I was an adventure violinist and I truly thought at this time working as a railroad police officer that this was going to be my ticket to freedom. This is it. Uh, I got zero responses from my Craigslist ad, but something fundamentally in me had changed and I started doing all of these tiny habits to improve my life. I realized at that time I had spent so much energy focusing on what I didn't want that I didn't even know what I wanted. I started these small, tiny habits, and one of those was the habit of giving. And I just started giving things to people. Uh, I'd be working a night shift as a police officer, and I would go to a coffee stand and just buy a coffee for a random person. And one of these days of giving, I decided I'm going to give away a book on Instagram. I had this hiking book that I wanted to give away. And at the time, I probably had about 70 Instagram followers, I think 10 of which were my mom following me under different accounts that were all her. And I hosted this major giveaway on my Instagram. And one person entered my giveaway. And that person was Rose. Uh, I had no idea that the one person who had just entered my giveaway also happened to be a person who had been sketching pianos in the wilderness for most of her life. The day Anastasia and I met, we met at a local coffee shop to talk about climbing Mount Baker. And I had joined the Everett Mountaineers basic climbing class and had scheduled a climb with my team to climb Mount Baker. And I'd read Anastasia's blog about her outdoor adventures and I wanted to hear her perspective about climbing Mount Baker and about mountaineering. Little did I know that that conversation at the coffee shop would hatch a plan to climb a local peak with our instruments later that summer. We both discovered that day we had the shared dream of playing our music on a summit at sunrise. And I was really excited to meet somebody else who shared that dream. Now, obviously, logistically, getting a piano up into the backcountry was a little bit of a challenge, but Rose figured out a way to buy a keyboard and shove it in her backpack, as you saw in the previous video. She actually does carry that. And at the last minute, I said, let's bring gowns. And we hatched this plan. And on September 1st of 2017, we headed out for what would be the very first Musical Mountaineers Sunrise Serenade without really having any expectation of what this would become. Initially, it was just the two of us wanting to see what it felt like to bring our music to the backcountry. And Rose, do you want to just share about that first experience? Yeah. We got up at 2.01 a.m. and I picked Anastasia up at her house. We had another friend go along on the hike with us and we went out to a local trailhead. We wondered if we would make it up to the top by sunrise. We wondered if anybody would hear us. We wondered what it would be like under the light of the moon and the soft alpine glow of the morning to hear those notes disappear into the morning wind. And we got up to the top of a granite um, peak and there are white slab granite rocks everywhere. And we slipped on our gowns and we were barefoot. There were a lot of bugs, but the moment we started playing the Ashokan Farewell by Jay Unger, something changed, something shifted in our experience. And we connected in that present moment to bring a very simple tune into the world. And I think that is what has, has inspired us to continue. After that single, uh, the first Sunrise Serenade, Rose and I had no expectations of what this would become. It was just Rose and Anastasia. And quite frankly, it still is Rose and Anastasia. Uh, we just have a name now. And I know that hiking down that first day, we never could have imagined all of the incredible things that would come as a result of the musical Mountaineers. I believe that it was two weeks after our first sunrise serenade 
a local journalist did a story on us and the journey has continued to evolve and unfold very organically and beautifully and I really believe that that's because the music is doing something very special out into the world. Rose and I both believe that music and nature are two languages that speak to everybody. You don't need to all speak the same language to understand or feel something from a song. And similarly, you don't need to understand one language uh, to, to feel the awe of being there at a sunrise. And when you combine the two of those things together, the effect of it is absolutely breathtaking and powerful. And the ripple effect that goes out into the world is something that is really special. We had a second grader listen to our music after we presented at a school. And she said that watching the music in the wilderness made her feel like she belonged. And I know that that is the mission now behind the Musical Mountaineers and why Rose and I continue to do this to this day, why we wake up at midnight and go hike into the mountains to do concerts for, uh, for nobody. Uh, and I believe too that each person has something like this. Rose and I both very, very strongly believe that. And we've reflected back on our Musical Mountaineers journey and discovered that it isn't just a journey of climbing peaks, it's also a journey of finding presence in our lives. And we've sort of narrowed that down to six habits and Rose is going to mention that now and then we'll talk about them with you. Those six things we met initially because of these six things. Anastasia, when she was still working for the railroad as a police officer, started to integrate some of these six things into her life. One of those things you see is giving. Anastasia and I initially met be because she decided to do a giveaway on her Instagram. And even though we didn't meet for almost a year after that I received that book, um, these six things bring us to find presence in each day. And as we outline these things, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that doing these six things brings you to any kind of summit or arrival. These things we love because they help us bring mindfulness and presence to each day as a journey. Um, and as we go through these things, um, we strongly recommend you know, keeping one small promise to yourself. Maybe it's not all six things. Maybe one of these things will resonate with you. So the first tiny thing is meditation. And I often think about my journey as a police officer and some of the struggles that I had there after handling uh, relatively traumatic incidences and I, I now see that it was through my own understanding or my own wanting to find peace in my life through that experience that I was introduced to meditation. I believe that meditation sometimes has a very woo uh, sort of stereotype to it. And it doesn't have to be that. It can be as simple as sitting for a minute. And for me, that's what it was. I would sit in my police office at one in the morning and simply close my eyes and focus on my breathing. The purpose of meditation is really for you to become the observer of your thoughts, not simply allow your thoughts to sweep you away to wherever they want to take you. So meditation is a part of my daily practice. I don't ever skip a day at all. You can use an app like Insight Timer, and actually Rose and I just started a Insight Timer channel. So if you search for the Musical Mountaineers, we're doing a combination of nature sounds and music and some really easy guided meditations or you can just simply sit and focus on your breath and really just tuning into the now and finding presence exactly where you are in your life without needing anything to be different. The next little thing that we'll mention is gratitude. 
And gratitude, not necessarily as a static list of things, but a feeling that comes from within. Um, a lot of times in order to tap into that feeling from within, it's helpful to make a list, uh, to come up with those two or three things that you're grateful for each day. Or as you're walking through your day, to notice something that you're grateful for and just hold that space for gratitude in your mind for 15 to 20 seconds. That building of neural pathway to see things with that insight of gratitude will build new structures in your brain to help you stay present in each day. Positive focus is the third habit. And this is very different from just being positive. I would never suggest to anybody, if you're not in a place where you're feeling happy or satisfied where you are, I would never just tell somebody, well, just be happy because that's not very realistic. The point of positive focus is to notice what you're giving your attention to and see if you can gently direct your attention to what you want to create. A lot of us go through life staring exactly at what is, which is putting that repeat button again and again on whatever our current reality is. This isn't about being indifferent to problems. It's about tuning yourself to the solution rather than focusing on the problem and being open to all the possibilities that are out there. The fourth and fifth tiny habits are the following. Um, daily intentions. Anastasia and I, Anastasia has really taught me a lot about practicing daily intentions um, in a way to not react to the world around us, um, but to intentionally prepave the way that I want to feel today uh, or how I want to see the world today. That could even go back to gratitude. That could go back to um, journaling in the morning. I will respond with gratitude today to whatever is happening. But either setting an intention each day as a way to kind of pave the way that you want to feel that day or journaling. I practice a morning routine, which is the fifth daily habit. And a morning routine, not in a way to be productive. <laughs> um, I find morning routine as really important, a way to just find my breath, to find that presence in each morning. So maybe that's just simply starting out with keeping a small promise to myself, like I will drink water as a morning routine. I will nourish my body with a good, good food. I will have a journaling practice that sets my mind to keep focus on these things. Um, in a way that those things, that gratitude, that presence is always there and we can continue to return to it throughout the day. So the final habit is giving. And I obviously have a special place in my heart for giving because if I had not given away that, that book, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. And definitely the musical Mountaineers might not exist. So giving for me is a daily practice and something I try to find a small way to do every single day. And I honestly think that this is really important right now, especially when a lot of people are moving through life with a lot of fear. It can be the tendency to want to hold on to things and to sense a limitedness or a scarcity mindset around what's available to all of us on the planet. And what happens is that when you give, you are sending out a signal that says that there's enough for all of us. And it does not have to be something big. I'm not telling everybody to go write checks for thousands and thousands of dollars. It could be buying somebody a coffee. It could be giving a compliment. It doesn't even have to be something monetary. But what happens when you give is that you're raising your energy. And I know that everybody on this call knows what it feels like to, to give freely and without expectation to others. And you will feel a lift of your energy. That is really the purpose of this entire set of habits is I, I love using the example of hiking. Most hikers know that when you go for a hike, you wear a base layer and that's the layer 
that's touching your skin. It's the most important layer because if you wear a cotton t-shirt climbing Mount Everest, you're going to get soaked and you're going to freeze no matter how expensive and fancy your down jacket is. It's the same thing when we're thinking about the energy of how we're living our life. This base layer is the most important thing and it dictates what comes back into your life. So I hope that all of you will look at these tiny little habits that seem so tiny uh, and really try incorporating one or even two of them into your life and just be open to seeing what happens. I know that you will notice a difference. These are things that are very, very easy to do every single day. They're also easy not to do. And so I know that it's tempting to think that creating something like the Musical Mountaineers is about uh, big plays or getting lucky. But really when it comes down to it, it was just both Rose and I being in this beautiful state of openness and receiving. I mentioned before that we believe that each of us has our own unique music on the mountain. For Rose and I, it's hauling a piano and a violin up the side of a peak. What is it for you? And can you be open to that existing? And can you allow yourself to receive and follow the little ideas and inspiration that you have? I, I believe that when that vision of me playing my mountain, my violin on the summit came to me, that I was in this beautiful state of receiving. And I know that when Rose entered my giveaway, she was too. I love that. I am going to read a poem that Anastasia wrote that is titled Beckler Peak. What do you feel in this brand new moment? Do you feel the gentle lift of the wind? The sunbeam caressing your skin? The earth spins as the bellows of life breathe, nestled next to a heart that beats and beats without us needing to do a thing. This moment isn't the past, an archive of memories and shoulda, woulda, can'ts. This moment isn't the future, an imaginary world of what ifs and maybes. It's only now. It's only you on the mountain. You and the mountain. You, the mountain. Until the notes blend into the wind, a symphony with the world. And maybe, just maybe, you can't tell where the mountain ends and you begin. Thanks for reading that, Rose. So we are going to end our talk today with some live music. And what I would love to do is to trick all of you into doing some of the habits that we just mentioned. And I, I would love for you as we're playing this song Wherever you are, if you feel comfortable, you could close your eyes. You can place your hand on your heart, but simply allow yourself to be here now and see if you can find just a simple feeling of gratitude. It can be for your heart beating. It could be for somebody that you love. It can be a memory that you have about a special moment in your life, but see if you can hold on to that feeling why, while we are playing the music, while simultaneously feeling that this music and this moment is specifically happening for you, because it is, otherwise you wouldn't be here.
Thank you so much, everybody, for being here and for listening to our story. I just really appreciate the time to share something that's so special to both of us. Okay, so we're just going to jump right into these questions. Have any wildlife come to listen to your music? We, uh, we've we seen a, a bear on one of our hikes. He didn't actually listen to us, but he seemed quite interested, maybe a little too interested in the piano sticking out of Rose's backpack. And so we made sure to to take a very wide route around the bear. But otherwise, we have a lot of little birds, uh, sometimes a, a pika or a marmot will sort of let out a little squeak and that's always really special. All right, next question is, on a non-summit day, what time do you normally wake up? <laughs> I sleep, like when if, if I'm not hiking on a non-summit day, I normally wake up at seven or eight. I have three cats who are very demanding and they like to wake me up around 5.30. <laughs> and I have embraced that. And I used to tell myself that I wasn't a morning person. And when you tell yourself that you're not a morning person, guess what? You're not a morning person. And so I really have tried to change my own viewpoint on that. And so now I, I, I would normally be awake between 5.30 and 6 o'clock every day to feed the cats. And then I usually do a meditation and uh, just spend the first maybe hour or so of the day doing things that kind of set my energy for the whole day. Oh, I like, this is a good question. How do you find your locations? I love that question. That's always something that I try and um, find based on the weather because the musical mountaineers generally do not go out if there's wind or rain in the forecast. That doesn't mean that there's never wind. <laughs> Sometimes we go to a place and there's no wind predicted and then there's 50 mile an hour wind gusts and we just have fun with it. Um, but we pick our locations based on thinking about um, where is a kind of less populated place that we could play. And then we ask ourselves, is there a campground nearby? Because we always want to practice leave no trace principles when we're out on our sunrise concerts to play in a place where there aren't people around and to play at sunrise in a way so that we're not disrupting somebody else's wilderness experience. Um, WTA is a great resource, Washington Trails Association, to find local hikes in your area. I love WTA. Um, a couple people have asked, Anastasia, are you still a police officer? That's a fun question. I'm not. <laughs> so I left my job as a police officer in 2017. And I told everybody that I was going to go pursue my dream and my career in the outdoor industry, uh, which was code for, I don't know what I'm about to do, but I think it's possible. And I'm fortunate enough to have a very, very supportive husband who doesn't think I'm completely nuts and has believed in me the whole time. I ended up starting a company called Kula Cloth, it's spelled K-U-L-A. And we make a very, very specific product for hikers or outdoor folks. Um, it is sort of funny to describe this to a group of people, but it is a leave no trace uh, toilet paper option for anybody who squats when they pee. It looks like this. And it's an antimicrobial, beautiful piece of art that you can use as a leave no trace option when you're hiking, camping, or during a pandemic. <laughs> um, I guess following up on the pandemic somebody asked how is COVID affecting both of you and your jobs or I guess perhaps maybe the musical mountaineering process as well how has COVID affected you yeah personally I teach piano from home um, I have a full studio here and since the beginning of March I've transitioned my whole piano studio to teach on zoom 
And I'm really grateful for that opportunity to switch over. I have a couple different cameras that I set up so students can see me and they can also see, I set up an iPad above the keys so they can see what I'm playing. Um, and COVID has affected me in a way that it continues to bring me back to my values as a teacher. Now I teach in a way that I want my students to delight in music. I want them to discover things about themselves and the world around them. And for music to be an avenue of a life-giving source that they can return to at any point that there's a piano. To me, teaching isn't necessarily about the achievements and the recitals, although I love those too, I really wanna bring music into my students' homes as a space of finding that presence. So COVID has really just helped me really decide and hone in on that value to bring that to my students. Um, and I love it. And I think for the, the musical Mountaineers, obviously Rose and I were not quarantined together. And so that has limited our ability to get out and perform. But I think it's also opened up a lot of creativity. We started our Insight Timer meditation channel and we have been sharing videos every day and writing poetry about them. One thing that is really at the heart of the musical Mountaineers is that whether we are playing music in our living room or whether we're on the summit of a peak, the feeling of that sort of infinite expanse of the universe and the wilderness is something that isn't dependent on where we are. So it doesn't matter if I'm in my living room or on the summit of something, I can still find that feeling exactly where I are. And I think that that feeling is what all of us are after. For me personally, I think that COVID has helped slow me down a little bit. As a owner of a business that makes reusable toilet paper, you can imagine that that sales have not been slow. Uh, in fact, they have gone through the roof. And so there have been challenges in dealing with that. But I've also really, really loved staying present and allowing myself to flow downstream with life as opposed to trying to swim upstream and not accept the way that things are. I think it's been a really beautiful practice for me. And I, uh, I know that the musical Mountaineers and the things that Rose and I have discovered through this adventure has helped both of us so tremendously in not pushing into what is and just allowing that creative flow to continue moving through us. That's awesome. And so for the last question I wanna ask, where and when is your next planned summit? <laughs> we don't have a next planned summit at this point. We're still um, watching the recommendations of hiking. Um, right now, the National Park is National Parks, Washington, or so Mount Rainier, Olympic, and North Cascades trailheads are still closed. And there's a recommendation to just hike within uh, with others in your household. So at this point, Anastasia and I are still social distancing and not hiking together. But um, as soon as there's a sunny day and that's lifted where we can hike together again, um, I'm sure that we'll be out. And we're, we have a plan this summer for sure to film another video like you all saw at the beginning of this presentation, because we have a plan with the Washington National Park Fund to play in a benefit concert this October um, at Benaroya Hall. So we're hoping to film another video in the North Cascades. And Mitch Pittman filmed the video. And I, I would love to just add one thing to that is that one of the unique things about the musical Mountaineers is that we play unannounced sunrise serenades for nobody. So we don't announce where we're going and when, uh, and that is keeping in alignment with the leave no trace principles. So uh, not having a crowd, for instance, on the summit of a mountain to watch a concert and not disrupting anybody else's experience. We sort of jokingly say that we climb a mountain and we let these notes out into the wilderness and then the musical mountaineers just disappear back into the fabric of the world. 
And so it really is this beautiful fleeting moment that was there and then it was gone. But there's something that has changed about us in the knowing that that moment existed. We do occasionally have people bump into us. Very, very rarely has anybody ever seen a sunrise serenade because nobody is crazy enough to wake up at midnight to go <laughs> to start their hike usually. Uh, but one thing that's really special is that on the way down, when we're hiking back out to the car is when usually we'll bump into people. And those experiences are very, very special to Rose and I. And we always feel that the people we meet uh, we share a special bond with them and have kept in touch with some of them to this day.